I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So in our last reading, we finished reading chapter 10 of 2 Kings. It took us two videos to read it, but it was the conquest of, or the completion of Jehu's conquest and takeover of Israel. Not exactly conquest. He killed the king, got the nobles to help kill the rest of the royal family, took over. And then he destroyed Baal worship completely, utterly. Killed all those who were true followers of Baal, destroyed the idols, destroyed the temple, burnt it all to the ground. But he didn't get rid of the golden calves in Dan and Bethel. Now, he reigned for 28 years, and that's the longest of any king in Israel so far. And that is because he did get rid of it. God said, well, we're going to let you do that. We're going to let you reign for a while because you got rid of Baal. But we don't really hear anything else about his reign, at least not so far. And he, we read about his death at the end of chapter 10. So he conquered, or he took control of Israel made himself king. 28, later, 28 years later, he died. We're given nothing of those 28 years. But we pick this up in chapter 11. We're going to turn back to the southern kingdom of Judah. Here we go. Chapter 11. Athaliah destroys the royal seed in Judah and reigns herself in Judah. Joash preserved and crowned king when seven years old. Jehoiada, the priest, destroys house of Baal. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jeho <clears throat> Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. So we cover very, we're, we're going back, this is the same time as the beginning of Jehu's reign. And remember, when Jehu went and killed King Jehoram of Israel, Ahaziah was there visiting Jehoram, and Jehu killed him as well. He had been king for only one year. So Jehu's uh, takeover of Israel resulted in both kings, both the king of Israel and the king of Judah dying kind of restarting the monarchy in both cases. When Ahaziah is dead, and the news of his death reaches Judah, his mother, Athaliah, kills all the rest of her children and kills all the other sons of her, her husband. Joram, remember Joram was a wicked king who followed the traditions of Ahab because his, he married the daughter of Ahab. And Athaliah is described as the daughter of Amri, or would be the sister of Ahab. So when Ahaziah dies, she's literally killing her own children to take over the kingdom. It says she killed all the seed royal. That's not just the sons, that's the whole family. The only one to survive is Joash. And he is hidden by his aunt, the sister of Ahaziah. Joash is the, is the son of Ahaziah. His aunt, uh, Jehoshaphat, hides him and his nurse, gets them to the temple to protect them from Athaliah. He's only one year old, well, he's one year old when Athaliah takes over and slaughters the rest of the family. Now, we don't know if Jehoshaphat lives or dies. It says, he killed all the, it says the only one to survive was Joash, and it's very likely that after she hid Joash, Athaliah killed her as well. So Athaliah, this is a power grab. She wants, to the, she wants the rulership. She married the king, and when her husband died, her son became king. And one year later, her son is killed, and she grabs the opportunity to take over the kingdom. And remember, she's killing her own children. Verse, verse, oh yeah, just before we continue, Joash is now seven years old, so he was hid in the house of the Lord, meaning the temple, for, seven year, for six years. And the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds and with the captains and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and shewed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath 
shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And the third part shall be at the gate of Sir, and the third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And two parts of you all, I'm sorry, and two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And ye shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within the, ra within the ranges, let him be slain. And be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were, in co that were to come in on the Sabbath, with them that should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guards stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king, from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son, and put the crown upon him, and gave him the testimony. And they made him king, and anointed him. And they clapped their hands, and said, God save the king. So what's going on here? This is in the seventh year of Joash. So he was hidden for six years. He was one year old when Athaliah takes over and slaughters the rest of the family. He's in hiding for six years. He's seven years old when he comes out. They make him king. What's the... What the commandment here is is guard the king. We are we are making we are taking over the kingdom. This is a this is a, a coup to take over the kingdom. So put the guards at the gate of Sir, which is one of the gates going into the temple, and the you know you guard the front and back doors basically, and then surround the king. And if anybody comes within reach of your weapons, so you arms them with spears and shields, and so if anybody comes within reach of your weapon, kill them. Don't take the chance of letting them get through. To kill the king. This whole thing is set up to take over. And so they set up this ring around the king, around Joash, in the temple, or you know, in the temple courtyard. They guard the gates, and then they crown him king, they anoint him king, and the cry goes up, Long live the king. So this is their bid to take over, to kick Athaliah out after six years. Let us continue verse 13. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people into the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar, as the manor was, and the princes and the trumpeters by, uh, by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the, the, captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her forth without the ranges. And him that followeth her killed with the sword. For the priest had said, Let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. And they laid, ha and they laid hands on her, and went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house. And there was she slain. So she comes in, she's wondering what all the noise is, what all the commotion is. And she sees this crowning ceremony. That's what they're, they're crowning a new king. She calls it treason, and the priest says, Get her. So they take her alive, though, because they don't want to kill her in the temple. They don't want to desecrate the temple. And so they take her out. And they kill her, says, where the horses come into the king's house. In other words, the stables, basically. And he says, anybody who follows after, anybody who tries to help her, kill them too. Or just not do it. She's an evil woman. Get rid of her. Verse 17. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they should be the Lord's people between the king and the also in the people. And all the people of the land went into the house of Baal and break it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly. And slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Lord. And he took the rulers over hundreds and the captains and the guard and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord and came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the king's. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was in quiet. And they slew Athaliah with the sword beside the king's house. Seven years old was, Je was Jehoash when he began to reign. So there you go. All the people loved that Joash was now king. Everybody rejoiced that Athaliah was being kicked out. She was not a good queen. Now, we don't really see any, we're not given any information about what she did as queen. But we know she followed the manner of Ahab, and Ahab was a murderer. He was a guy that was willing to murder to get 
people's land. He, he, was, he, he did sacrifices to Baal, likely human sacrifices to Baal. So she was definitely not a well-liked person. And when she was dead and Joash was sitting on the throne, everybody celebrated. Now you will also note that Joash here, through most of this chapter, he is called Joash, and at the very end, it changes to Jehoash. Instead of just Joash, it's Jehoash. Now why the change? Maybe it's because he became king. They kind of gave him a new name, which is not uncommon. But we don't really know why. We just know that he is called either Joash or Jehoash interchangeably. We, it's the same person. But we will leave that here. I believe we'll be picking this up in Second Chronicles, reading a little bit about Athaliah there before we move on. So Now, actually, one last note. Athaliah was queen, you know, he usurped the throne for six years. Jehu is king for 28 years. In other words, it is in, in the sixth year of Jehu that Athaliah is killed and Joash becomes king, and we have another 22 years of Jehu while Joash is king. So we will, we will look at the timeline again, but uh, see you in the next one.